Afternoon everyone, it's Darlene McLennan here and on behalf of ADSET and ATTEND I'd like to welcome you to this webinar. Um, firstly I'd like to pay respects to the um, and acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we all meet today and I'd like to pay um, my respects to their elders, past, the elders past and present. Today our presenter um, is Greg O'Connor and Greg will be introducing us to um, some a new tool for making digital maths and STEM simpler for students and teachers to create mathematical equations and formulas and graphs, which is absolutely fantastic. Greg is from Text Help and um, probably needs no introduction to those of us in the disability sector, um, but um, as he's kind of um, a great friend of us over many years, um, and he it's always a pleasure to listen to him as he speaks with such passion and enthusiasm for his topics. Before we begin, I just want to do a few housekeeping items. Today's um, webinar is being uh, captioned by Bradley Reporting and will be recorded. The recording will be placed on AdSet um, and after about a week or two the recording will get captioned. Um, the GoTo webinar platform is not as accessible as we would desire for people who are using screen readers. Um, if you are a screen reader user <coughs> and if you have any questions um, or any comments, you can email us at adset, which is A-D-C-E-T dot admin at utas dot edu dot au. All participants have been muted. This is to ensure as little background noise is received during the webinar. The presentation will run for around 50 minutes if Greg keeps the time, and we will have a few quest um, minutes for questions at the end. Throughout the presentation, feel free to enter your questions in the question pod, and I will ask, the present, um, ask Greg at the end of the presentation, or he will answer them himself. If you have any technical difficulties during the webinar, please feel or please email adset.admin at utas.edu, um, and yeah, I hope you enjoy this webinar. So over to you, Greg. Thank you, Darlene, and hi, everybody, and thank you to AdSet for this opportunity to uh, have a chat to you and uh, demonstrate a couple of, I think, cool tools to, to make math and STEM digital in the post-secondary education sector. So um, I'll just get my slides over here. So my name's Greg, and I'm part of the TextTop Asia-Pacific team, and I provide technology innovation and implementation across the Asia-Pacific region as part of that team. Today we're going to have a look at this thing called STEM, STEM being science, technology, engineering and math. And I want to really focus on ma mathematics mostly, a little bit of science. And, you know, how do we support STEM in the post-secondary education sector, particularly now in this digital world, this world where we're constantly using computers um, to support our, our students, and our students are using uh, technology themselves. Uh, one of the, th just a bit of background, just so before we, as we start to think about STEM, um, going right back into the, into the school sector, into school, we know that. Um, as students progress through school, you know, uh, they, they, uh, their proficiency in things like mathematics gets progressively lower as they go through school. Um, and, and the way that students access STEM is a real issue for us and there's a lot of this debate happening in the media at currently and in the, the political arena. Uh, there's a couple of problems with, that, that, that exist because of all this. One is that um, it's most important that, that our students have have access to STEM and 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 are engaged in this in in STEM subjects at school and in the post secondary environment, and um, we know that, for instance, the first problem we have is that is that when uh, students leaving school, if they if they've had persistent problems around say mathematics as an example, we know that they're less likely to graduate high school than their than their, their peak their peers, sorry, and they're even less likely to attend university. And this is compounded even more by those students 
who who have additional barriers at school, barriers around, say, their literacy, um, a learning disability, students with English is not their first language. It's it's compounded. This issue is compounded. The second problem we have is that is that lots of people's uh, attitudes to STEM is actually formed right back in primary school. You know, a lot of people go, "Oh, I'm no good at STEM. Or, I'm no good at maths. Maths isn't what I'm good at." And um, and again, this is compounded again by the by the students we work with and the people that we work with. Uh, who 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 are presented with, with barriers in whatever education process they're in because um, they might be struggling around literacy, but they're also then just not even considering STEM as a, as an option for themselves. And we know this is a problem because it's not only a problem at school, but it's it's uh, it's an issue for us all in terms of employment. STEM jobs are growing at a much faster rate than non-STEM based jobs in our in our. Um, in our economy, um, it, it, at the moment, you know, over one and a half times the, the rate of non-STEM jobs. So lots of the folks that, that we support and work with are missing out on th that employment. And we, and we also know that employers value STEM as a qualification in the workplace. And they also see STEM employees as probably their most innovative workers. So so th there is an issue here and we need to, we need to address it. Uh, but the, one of the things that we have is actually when we're in uh, education, both in, in school education and post-secondary education sector, um, um, there's a, there's a, we, see a, we see a couple of barriers that exist for our students. And, um, and I want to kind of address two of them in this webinar and, and look at two particular tools that Textorp has to, to support the removal of these barriers to give our students access. And as I said, I'm going to focus mostly in mathematics, but a little bit of science, but this is generally around the STEM idea. And the first barrier that, I, that, that, that we see that is, is actually the literacy of, of mathematics and literacy of STEM and the difficulties around the reading and writing in that, in that area. And then the second barrier is the fact that uh, how do you make something uh, non-digital become digital and in particular a simple thing like like generating a mass equation. It's probably the major barrier in, in, in the digital world for us is that when students come to write a simple equation, how do they do it in a Microsoft Word document? How do they do it in a Google Doc? How, how do they access that information? So what I want to do in this webinar is actually explore how we can remove those barriers and make access to STEM in the digital environment for all our for all our students that we support. And a really important um, uh, background um, pedagogy to all this, the, the, the theme that I have to all this is that the bottom line is what, I, what I'm passionate about is actually that these tools are the tools of the learners, not the tools of the, the system or the, uh, or the support staff. What generally happens for uh, lots of people that we work with in, in the education sector is that if they need access to any kind of accommodations or adjustments, they're provided by others and, and they have to wait for those to be given to them. What I love about the, the kind of some of the tools I'm going to show you is it's actually the tools belong to the learner and the learner can access them 24-7 when and how they need. And it's this issue of agency, agency being given you have the power to act yourself, and so I want you to be, to be considering that what these tools are about is actually learner agency. So let's jump in and have a look, and I want to start with the first barrier I mentioned is literacy. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time around literacy and mathematics in particular, um, and then I will then get on to the second part of the webinar will be around actually this issue of generating math equations and, and actually being able to express, express yourself mathematically in the digital world. So for those who are following on the slides who need the slides, I'm currently on slide 14. I'm, I'll be going um, through the slides and, and pretty soon I'm going to be jumping out and uh, um, doing uh, demos. I'll be on, I want to demo stuff and show you how th the different tools I'm talking about work. So I'll be jumping from the slides in and out and I'll make sure that I'll, I remember to tell you which slide I'm jumping back, back into as I do that. When it comes to literacy and mathematics, the research has shown that mathematics texts and STEM texts uh, have more concepts per sentence and paragraph 
than any other type of text. In other words, mathematics and STEM text is the most difficult text that we get to read. It's, it's difficult because, uh, not only because of the words, but because it contains lots of numeric and non-numeric symbols to decode. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there we've got to, we've got to kind of get our heads around. And also there's, there's graphics that are included that we need to make sense of if we, if we actually under, uh, are to understand the complement text. So with that in mind, we need to think about that and, and we need to think about the literacy of our students. If we have any, in a post-secondary environment, if we have any student for whatever reading, for whatever reason, is reading below, reading English below 100 words per minute, those students are spending all their time decoding the text on, this, on in front of them and not actually comprehending what they read. And that's compounded in the world of mathematics and science and STEM. So that's the first thing we actually need to actually ensure that st students who are reading below 100 words per minute have some other way of, of actually having that text read to them. And we also know that when you get read to, you listen and understand, you comprehend above your current reading level. So the ability to actually have stuff read to you is really important as well. And so in the digital world, the, the digital uh, tool of text-to-speech, of having what's on your screen read back to you is just really, really important. And, and this, for me, it's one of these, one of these simple uh, features that are available in the digital world that we just need to, sorry, we need to utilize. And here at Textup, we have a tool. I just want to kind of quickly go through this first with you. Um, it's called Read and Write. And Read and Write is a toolbar that appears for a student wherever they are. It's a toolbar that actually is available in, uh, on, in Mac. It's a toolbar available in Windows. They're both uh, soft downloadable software on both those platforms. Uh, they're available. It's actually also, they also work, sorry, offline. A read and write is also a Chrome extension. It's also a, an extension in Microsoft Edge. And it's also a, uh, available via a iPad or Android tablet. And so when you actually have read and write, you just get access to this toolbar that appears on your screen wherever you are. Um, and it has, and that toolbar is available with a whole range of features. I'm on slide 23 currently, and um, you'll be giving access, you'll be given access to these slides at the end of the webinar or after the webinar. I'm happy to provide this to you. And on slide 23, there's a link there, bit.ly forward slash rwch. ART. And that's just a link to an online chart that shows you all the different uh, versions of read and write across the platforms and all the features that are available across the different versions. The cool thing is that though, when you get read and write, you actually have access to all versions on, on all platforms. Uh, if you wish to access a program like read and write, you just need to go to our website, texthelp.com.au, find the read and write link and there you can go to try now and you can download a free 30-day trial in whatever platform that you wish. Um, so read and write, one of the tools it provides is text-to-speech and as I mentioned before when we actually have any text in the in the STEM world we know it's actually it's 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 difficult to read to start with, uh, let alone if I'm actually having any difficulties with, with literacy myself. So if I just go across here, I'm just going to jump out here and go to a document. And here I have a, a, a document. I'm actually in the Chrome environment, so I'm using a Google Doc, but this is exactly the same if I was using, say, a Microsoft Word document on a Windows machine or a Mac. I've got access to this text, I need to be able to read this text, so I just need to find my read and write uh, I, uh, symbol, which is the little purple puzzle piece, because I've got read and write installed. Click on that, and I get a toolbar that appears, and on my toolbar, I have a number of uh, features. What I'm going to do is I'm putting my cursor at the beginning of the first sentence I want read. I then find the play button, I press the play button. Science and technology may be partly responsible for many of the problems that face us today. 
the problems of the advancement of and so, so it has that text read to me. So anywhere I I, I'm a, I can have that text on a, a on a um in a here I'm in a Google Doc. I'm in a Word Doc. I could also be on a website, a PDF, uh, an ebook. Having that text read back to me is most important. So that's you know I'm removing that barrier straight away by having text to speech available, and I can make all sorts of adjustments to that, the way it's being read, the speed, the voice even visually how it's being read. Um, as I was reading then, it was actually highlighting each sentence uh, yellow and then highlighting each individual word blue. I can make all sorts of adjustments around that as well. Just jumping back to my slide deck and going to slide 26, the other thing that Read and Write does, it, it's not only it's supporting uh, me with, read and, uh, with text to speech so I can actually have that information read to me, to support my understanding and comprehension. It has a number of other tools that I can use, uh, particularly are useful in the STEM environment. Um, for instance, uh, it has a tool we call the voice note tool. So when you're using read and write in a uh, Google Doc, in a Microsoft Word document, and also a PDF, which I'm going to briefly show you, students can, can go to their document, and I'm just jumping back to my Google Doc that I've got open here. I can highlight some text. After having read this text, I can highlight some text and I can leave myself a voice note. And I do that by highlighting text, choosing the voice note feature on my toolbar, clicking on that. It then provides me with a microphone and a play button. I can record myself and then insert that recording into my document. And I've made one here earlier. Here I've actually highlighted the word, the words water pollution website in my document and I needed to make a note to myself that it was read back but I needed to actually follow up on that website. So I recorded my voice note and when I come back I can play that voice note again. Research the water pollution website and find more data to support this statement. So that was just a quick note I left for myself in that document. So that's a, a, another feature that I can use to support my reading and also my research and study. Going back to my slide deck and now just going to slide 27. Um, as, as I'm doing that, I'm also realizing that I'm in, in the STEM world in my post-secondary education. I get lots of STEM material. Uh, through course notes, through journal articles, um, wherever I am. And sometimes that material is actually not digital. And I know that I actually need to make it digital because by having it digital, I can access things like text-to-speech and the voice note, for instance. So Read and Write has built into it OCR capabilities, OCR standing for Optical Character Recognition. So with Read and Write, you can uh, have access, you do have access to a scan feature and Read and Write allows you in uh, both Windows and Mac and in the Google environment to scan in any images. The great thing about that, again coming back to that concept of learner agency, is I don't have to wait for someone to scan it for me. If, I, if I've got access to uh, a device with a camera, I can, I can take a photo of any text I encounter, um, upload that, that, that text into whatever platform it, I'm in and convert that text to a format that can be read back. I've, um, as an example, I've done that. If I just go back up to here, back into my, up to my, another tab in my window, I've just gone to a tab where what, what I'm showing here is a f it, I took a photo of a page from a, uh, a textbook and that Read and Write was able to uh, convert that to a PDF. And once it's converted to a PDF, uh, Read and Write now, when you actually have Read and Write, it actually also gives you access to what we call the Text Help PDF Reader. So it allows you to access that PDF, have it read back to you, and do a whole bunch of other things as well. So I'm on this here. I can choose uh, this, uh, this from this toolbar. So Read and Write, uh, sorry, Text Help PDF Reader gives me this inbuilt toolbar for my PDF reader. I've got a click to speak tool. I then go and choose where I want it to be read. It's now reading back the text from that PDF. 
Algebraic geometry is being applied to control theory in this. And I'll just stop that for the moment. And that was but a few minutes ago uh, an image, a JPEG, and it's being converted to whatever format I, I wish to have. If I was using uh, the Windows or Mac version of Read and Write, I could have also converted that to a um, to a Microsoft Word format. I can also um, have converted that to a EPUB format and also HTML uh, format too, which is great if I need to make adjustments to the background color and the um, text size as well. And in the PD and in the read and write, uh, sorry, the text top PDF reader, it also has the ability to provide things like I'll just highlight that word. I've highlighted a word in the in the document called algebraic. Actually, what I'll do is I'll highlight algebraic geometry, and I can now leave myself a voice note there as well um, to follow up on that particular um, issue. But I can also as well uh, with text hops PDF reader annotate that PDF by choosing the typewriter feature on my toolbar. I then click on my PDF. It brings up a window for me. I can type in my notes that I can annotate the the PDF. I can um, use the, I can use the uh, word prediction. So as I type, it's got word prediction. So I can annotate with word prediction, and it's also got voice recognition. So I can annotate. I can use my voice to type. So I just uh, use speech recognition to to uh, use my voice and it came up I can use my voice to type on the screen I've now annotated my my PDF and I can then have that um, annotated on my PDF okay jumping back to my slides that was uh, um, back on slide 29 so that's using the text PDF reader and just finally with before I leave um, um, I leave uh, read and write and get on to the next section of our webinar which is around making uh, generating mass equations and more um, just uh, as well as the, the issue of literacy around reading and accessing content in the STEM environment I also need to research that area and read and write is a great tool for students when it comes to research as well so if I go back to my uh, up to my jump out of my slides here and go back to another tab in my browser here and I've got a tab where I've been um, uh, uh, looking at um, issues around nitrogen and phosphorus uh, in terms of uh, pollution and so I've caught up this website and normally what I may do is uh, have that I have that read to me which I, which I can using read and write uh, maybe copy and paste and um, uh, but I need a better way to actually support my research and study. If I go back to and find my read and write toolbar, and there it is, it's this time I'm looking for the read and write symbol up on my uh, extensions. I'm in the Chrome browser. And I can do this in different ways if I was using Internet Explorer or um, any other browser in any other platform. With that there, I've actually want to, I've read this this page and I want to start collecting information for um, whatever research I'm doing so I can highlight some text that I've read on my toolbar I've got a number of highlighters I'll just choose one I've got a yellow highlighter so I'll choose yellow it's now highlighted that text on that website yellow, as an example and I can be highlighting more text on that website if I wish but on the toolbar if I go back to the toolbar there is a collect highlights feature on my read and write toolbar when I click on that it's now going to ask me what I want what I want to do and I'm, I want to click these highlights in yellow whatever colors I've chosen the other colors I could have are blue green and pink so I can have multiple highlights in different colors but I'm okay with what I've chosen just in yellow I press OK read and write will now take what I've highlighted and put that into a new document click that in the new document and also at the same time it's also provided me with the link where I got that information from so I can actually go back and quickly re, um, get that information again so it actually helps me keep track of what I'm doing if I'm using read and write in the Windows for, environment for instance 
not only will it do that, but it will do it from multiple websites and documents. And when it comes to generating uh, um, a web link from where I got the information from, it will do more than that. It will generate a bibliography for me at the end of my document in whatever citation format I want. Um, so that's a really cool research and study feature built into Read and Write as well. So going back to my slide deck, so obviously there's a lot of issues around literacy that I need to support, and Read and Write is a, is a program that really supports students around STEM in a, per, in a post-secondary um, education space. But the other barrier that, that I identified and I want to discuss now for the rest of the webinar is actually this idea about STEM and in particular mathematics and to a lesser extent science, but mathematics, how do I actually go from pen and paper to this digital world where I actually have to generate simply mass equations in a digital world? Um, Slide 32 is a, it's a double up, it should be slide 34, so I'll just flick, I'll flick through to slide 33. Currently, when you, we want to make maths digital, uh, we've used tools in the past like uh, the Microsoft um, Equation Editor, um, which is really difficult to use, well I find it difficult to use, and for many students find it difficult to use, and it's only available in, uh, in Microsoft Word, and it has on limitations, and there are other programs out similar to that. What we need to be able to, to be thinking about, and this is on slide 34, we need to uh, empower our students, again that idea of learner agency, to communicate their thought processes in the methods that they prefer. We need to give them multiple ways they can tell us what they know in terms of STEM and multiple ways they can they can um, generate things like a maths equation. You know, how do they do that and not, um, not have a one-size-fits-all modality happening for them? And that's when the second tool I want to show you comes into play and it's called Equatio, E-Q-U-A-T-I-O. And it's really, what Equatio is on about is really about making maths digital. And it provides, what Equatio does is provides multiple ways students can express themselves mathematically and also in, in science as well. Um, it does this by uh, allowing things like, like speech input, using your voice to generate um, math equations. Uh, predictive text, where you can actually generate math equations using predictive text uh, around maths, chemistries, and particular formulas. Handwriting recognition, that if a student has access to a touch screen, uh, it will convert their handwriting into mathematic uh, equations and text as well and also the ability to generate uh, graphs using Equatio. And I want to jump in now and actually just demonstrate some of those features to you um, about how, how, we, how we can do that. If you want to access a copy of Equatio for yourself, if you're a Chrome user, you can go to the Chrome Web Store. Just go in and Google Chrome Web Store. And when you get there, type in Equatio, E-Q-U-A-T-I-O and you'll be able to um, access the Chrome version of, of uh, Equatio. Or you can, again, you can go to our website, uh, www.texthelp.com.au, and there you can find the Equatio section, and you can get a trial version of Equatio. Um, and when you get Equatio, though, you, get, uh, you might get initial trial version in the Chrome environment, but it give, also gives you access to Equatio across a number of other platforms which I'm going to show you in a moment. Um, well, actually, I'll show you now. Those are, and I'm going to demo for this for you, is uh, Equatio for Google. So it's an extension in the Google environment. It's a Chrome extension for Google Docs. So Chrome is an extension for Google Forms, and it's an extension for Google Slides as well. And Equatio is also for, in Windows and Mac, where it's a desktop application for Microsoft Word. So it's in, it's in the Chrome environment and it's also in Windows and Mac for Microsoft Word. Just let me jump in and I'm just going to um, show this to you how this works. So I'm leaving my slides now and going into another tab in my browser where I've, I've just got a, a Google Docs. So I'm going to use the Google 
um, a version of Ecrasher, but what I'm going to demo here is exactly the same if I was using a Microsoft Word on a Mac or Microsoft Word on a Windows machine. And what I've got, I've got Equatia installed, and when it's installed, it gives me a toolbar at the bottom of my screen with a number of features available. And I mentioned before that Equatia has a speech input built into it. It has handwriting recognition. It has a graph editor. It's also got a predictive text fire and equation editor. And for those who are interested, it also has um, LaTeX as well. So let's just kind of jump up here now. And I've got this document open. And uh, I need to write, I'm just, just giving, giving myself a couple of headings here to remember what I need to write in here. And I need to write uh, uh, the Pythagorean theorem. I need to type in, I need to have in this document, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And how do I do that? I can do that with pen and paper, sure, but how do I do that digitally? How do I do that in a digital environment, in a Google Doc? in a Microsoft Word document, for instance, and lots of other places as well. Well, let's, let's have a look. Let's look on our toolbar. The, if I just go down to my toolbar here and choose speech input to start with, using my toolbar, I've got my cursor where I want this, this uh, text to go. I can press the, the start speech input. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So I've, I've, uh, I've dictated that to my machine. It's recognized what I've said and it's converted that um, in my toolbar at the bottom of my screen to A squared plus B squared equals C squared. On the right-hand corner, I've got two buttons now, edit mass, insert mass. So I'm gonna, I want to insert that into my document, so I press insert mass. Equation now inserts that where my cursor was, I now have that inserted into my document. Uh, it's, in, it's inserted it as an image, but the image is accessible in terms of, it, I can actually do a couple of things with that. One, um, I can have that read back, and particularly if I've got uh, read and write, which I do have installed, if I click on that, on that, uh, that A squared plus B squared equals C squared in my document, I can then press the play button, a squared plus B squared equals C squared. So I can have that read back, which is really important because I need to actually get that feedback that what I put in there is correct. Um, I can also, uh, if, I, if I've made a mistake, I can also press the edit mass button and it will actually bring that back into my crash pro, uh, um, toolbar and I can go back and, and edit that if I need to edit that as well. So that's using the that's using the speech uh, input method. And I'm just going to delete when I've done that and start again. <clears throat> I've also got on my toolbar handwriting recognition. So when I click on that, I, I get given a, a, a space to do handwriting. Of course, I'm not, I don't have a hand, I don't have a touch screen what I'm using, but I'll do my best. But if I was using, um, a touch screen uh, device, you know, I might have a laptop, uh, a Surface Pro, or I might have a Chromebook that's actually, um, that actually has a touch screen. I can do things like, as I start to write on my screen, it will convert what I've written to, I'm doing a pretty good job, I think, of pretending to do that. So you can see then, again, it's actually, um, taken my handwriting, converted it into math, put my cursor in my document, I then come and press insert math, it's now going to insert that equation into my document as well. Okay, the, the other way that I can, I can uh, insert uh, math into my document is what we call the equation editor. I'm just going to get this fixed up here a bit. I'm going to delete what I've just done with my document to start again. And this time with the equation editor, if I want to use my keyboard to insert a, a, a math into my document, I can use it in terms of predictive text. So I'll type A. Then I'll start to type the word squared, SQ. And uh, equation automatically recognizes that I'm, I'm typing a mathematical 
math terminology. And so it's giving me a drop down menu where it's got squared, as in uh, squared with the power of two, a squared root, um, a square meter. It's, it's, I'm given a number of different options. And so I choose squared. Then I can simply start typing in plus. Again, it gives me options for that as well. I choose plus. I start typing in B squared. Choose that. Then I can start typing in equals. Choose that. C squared. Choose that. And I quickly have actually generated A squared plus B squared equals C squared by using predictive text on my screen. Um, I can make a couple of adjustments as I'm doing that in terms of the settings. If I go into settings, which is down on the left-hand corner of my Equatia toolbar, which is on the bottom of my screen, and go to options. In options, I can choose to have various sizes of my font. So I'm choosing the extra large size. So I can choose extra, extra large, large, regular or small size font. And I can also change, um, uh, that currently there's uh, either UK English, US English, and there's currently Spanish as well. And I've also um, have here the ability in terms of predictive text, not only to predict in terms of mathematics, but I can also predict in terms of chemistry and formulas. And I've got those turned on as well. Now, the reason I would do that is because I've got here, for instance, in um, on my document here, I've kind of I need to write the quadratic uh, equation, the quadratic formula. So if I go back to my equation editor on my equation toolbar, and this time I'm going to start typing in quadratic. And as I start to type that in, you can see one of the uh, predictive options that turns up is uh, I've just typed in the letters QUA. I've got option of a quarter, I've got the option of quantity, but my third option comes up is quadratic formula. And so automatically, it's actually then giving me the quadratic formula. I can then put my cursor in my document, go insert math. It's now going to insert the quadratic formula into my document. Again, if I've got read and write installed and I want to have that read back to make sure that's what I want, I can press on my toolbar, the play button, and it will now read that back to me. X equals the fraction with numerator negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC and denominator 2A. So I'm also getting access not only to the terminology, uh, sorry, to putting the equation into my document, but I'm getting access to the terminology and, and, and understanding what I'm actually writing about as well. And I could have done that uh, um, with my voice as well, voice input, quadratic formula. So what I did then, I went to my uh, equation toolbar, chose voice input, said quadratic formula, and it's automatically converted that that for me. If I actually need to actually have the quadratic formula as LaTeX, if, if any of those any of you are understanding what LaTeX is, which is basically a, a way of scripting um, math for um, for uh, journal journals or uh, for publishing, I can choose on my toolbar the LaTeX editor button and it will automatically convert whatever I've got there into LaTeX as well. Uh, the really cool thing about LaTeX is that when you, um, you, you've got the LaTeX of that and you copy that, LaTeX is a great way of, if you've got a math equation, of doing a search in, in a browser. So if, I, if I, um, I've gone to a new tab in my window and I want to know a bit more about what that equation is, I can paste in the LaTeX version of that equation, press enter, and automatically, you can see, it's automatically done a search and it knows it's the quadratic formula and it's automatically kind of found that for me. So it's a great way of a, a, as a research tool as well. I'll just get rid of that tab now and go back to uh, my document. So that's, uh, it'll just go, I'm going to go now and clean that up and delete that. So you can see that on this toolbar, I've got, again, I've got an equation editor, a LaTeX editor, handwriting recognition, and speech input. One other tool that, uh, that um, uh, 
Equatio has is a graph editor. So I need to put in uh, the graph of a parabola there, and I know that um, oops, I know that uh, I can do a simple parabola by by having three x squared as an example. So I can type in three x and using my equation editor, type in sq, it gives me predictive text. I choose the first one for squared, and that now gives me three x squared. If I want to convert that, had that. Uh, uh, um, shown as a graph and also I want to insert that graph into my document I go onto my toolbar and find the graph editor. Equatia has a, a graphing tool by Desmos built in and you can see on the screen that it's automatically converted that um, that 3x squared what it looks like as a parabola. Uh, I can also do things like change the the three to an unknown factor, turn it into a slider, and now I have an interactive graph as well. And if I'm good, I can just get in, I want to insert that into my document. So I put my cursor there and I'll go insert graph. And now Equatia will, uh, sorry, yes, Equatia will insert that graph into my, into my document as well. I could bring that graph back out to, to edit that by going edit graph and now the graph can come back and I can actually do more editing, editing on that graph and reinsert it if I wish. So, okay, so uh, just to, so I have a number of tools there that automatically that just changes what I can do. All of a sudden I, I have the ability to generate mass equations with my voice, with handwriting. I have the ability to generate mass equations using a keyboard with predictive text and, and edit it. I've also got the ability to generate uh, graphs and I've got the ability to use something like, for instance, LaTeX. If I go back to my slide deck here and go back to slide 48, there's a couple of other features around Equatio that make it doubly exciting. One is, is with, it, with any Equatio subscription that you have or access to Equatio, you also get access to what we call Equatio Math Space. With Equatio Math Space, you just type in equatio.textop.com and it gives you access to an online in the cloud math space and here's one that I've started here and you can see it's uh, again it's around uh, the equation of, uh, of a parabola. Um, when you've opened up that math space it's literally its own web page. Uh, at the bottom of the screen I have my I have my equatio toolbar. I've got a couple of extra tools available because I'm on this math space. I can actually now insert a whole bunch of images if I need. I also have the ability to do freehand drawing and insert text. I guess the way I think about this is a bit like a whiteboard, effectively, or a, or a, a space or a large part, bit of paper, uh, butcher's paper that I'm actually just generating a whole bunch of content onto. Um, and you can see that I've generated a whole a whole range of information here around a parabola that, that I might want to share with others, or I just want to generate this content. In a, in a more usable space for myself. The cool thing about math space is that when I generate text, it automatically comes built in with this text-to-speech. So I've just, I've just uh, chosen some text I've, I've written, and now I can, I can actually press read aloud. A quadratic function is one of the four math. x equals x squared plus bx plus c, where a I'll stop that. It will read those equations back to me. I've chosen another equation in my math space. Again, I can read. Y uh, equals AX squared plus BX plus. I can have that read back to me as well. So the math space has text-to-speech built into it. So that's a really cool feature. If I, a really cool aspect of Equatia, if I wanted to share that math space with somebody else, on the top of my screen, on the right-hand side, there's a share button. I choose that. I go continue. When it gives me step one, it's saying share this with your friends, colleagues, or other students. It will now generate its own, a link to that math space, its own unique web link. And here it's generating it now, taking a minute. And once it's generated that, that link, 
it will I can copy that link and now I can essentially just copy that and share that link to anybody else and they'll have access to the math space that I've developed. It's actually a great teaching tool but also a great way that students can uh, can um, generate um, ideas, thoughts, um, um, do assessments and not only share with with, with their with uh, their teacher but also share with other 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 students and, and in more of a collaborative way. So that's called uh, Equatio Math Space. But just because I'm really looking at the time, I I'm, I'm going to finish in a couple of minutes. I just want to kind of show you two other really cool new features that, that Equatio has. And what we realize is that, that often um, a lot of, lot of information that students has, have is, uh, needs to be available in other formats. And they, they need to be able to generate um, math digitally from, from, uh, from what they've already done uh, with pen and paper, for instance, or actually via a mobile device. So we now have Equatio Mobile. So with your Equatio subscription, you also get access to Equatio Mobile, which means that your phone or a tablet gives you the ability to, um, to use the handwriting recognition feature, to use the voice recognition feature, and also uh, a has built in OCR where you can actually take a photo of, of any math in your environment, it will convert it for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how that works. So I'm going to go back to my Google Doc um, doc here that I had where I need to put in um, this uh, formula, this A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight, and I've got my, I've got my iPad, um, just log in here and you can see my, on the right hand side of the screen, I'm just scrolling there. Um, with uh, Equatio mobile, any device I have, I just need to open up that device and use the native browser of that device. Because I'm using an iPad, I'm going to use Safari as the browser. If I was using an Android device, I would use um, uh, Google Chrome. So I've opened up Safari and I've actually typed in Equatio.io uh, into that. It automatically gives me access to my, I log in with my account. It gives me access to uh, Equatio Mobile. I then ask it to find any active documents I have open at the moment and I just need to make sure that, yep, so I've got this Maths Doc Simplified, that's the name of this document. And you can see on the screen here that that's one of the doc is saying it's saying that I've got this document open. I choose it, and I've just clicked on that screen on my iPad. And down the bottom of the my iPad screen, you can see that I've got uh, handwriting recognition, um, a microphone, and a camera. If I choose the handwriting recognition, I can choose to write on my device a squared plus b squared equals C squared. There's a green arrow there, there a green button with a, with, a, with a tick, sorry. Choose it. It's asking me whether I want to save that as math or as an image. I'm going to save it as math. It's now converted my handwriting to digital format, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And at the bottom of my iPad, there's a blue button with an insert arrow. Press on that. It's now going to insert, and you can see on the left-hand side of my screen, it's inserted that text straight into my into my document. That's cool to do be able to do that. And I'm just going to go back to here and delete that. I could have also going back to my iPad over here. I can also use the microphone button, and now I'm going to record myself. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And of course you should always try this before. I'll just do that again. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And I think because I've got my um, my uh, different microphones working, it's it's actually getting confused. So I'm not, gonna, but it will basically work the same way if I was if I wasn't all logged in as I'm in now. It would actually here it goes, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So now it's getting very confused with me. 
So I'm just going to get rid of that. The third feature that I can actually do though is on my device is in the really important one is the camera. And with the camera, I have the ability to take a photo of any text that I've got in my environment. So I'm going to just choose camera. The, my device is asking me to allow access to the camera. I choose allow. I've got a document, some text I've written here on a piece of paper, and you can see this is my piece of paper there, and I can take a photo of that. So I've got taken a photo of that. I'm going to crop that. I just want to get the math that's actually there. I want to just grab that. So I go, I put a, um, a, a crop box around the math, math that I want. I then have the green button with the tick, and I choose OK. It then it's asking me whether I want to save it as mathematics or I want to save it as an image. I want to save it as math. It's now going to convert that into uh, mathematics. And you can see it's also because it was multiple lines, it's converted that into multiple lines. I will then choose in the blue button to insert. It's now going to insert that and it's going to insert that where my cursor was in the document. And there I have that text now, uh, that, that, that uh, equations now have been inserted into my document. The other cool thing I could have done is if I go back to the camera, on, if I'm going back to looking at my, um, my iPad on the right hand side, I might wish to actually collect all that information because I've got a diagram there, I've done, some, I've done a whole bunch of other information that I want to also collect. And this could be the uh, the, this, the whiteboard of my lecturer who's been uh, writing on a whiteboard you know, and I have problems taking those notes from the whiteboard, for example. Well, with Equatio Mobile, I just need to take a photo of that whiteboard, choose the green button with the tick, and this time, rather than say, sa save as math, I'm going to save it as an image that's captured, and, and I'm going to now insert by choosing the blue button. Just give it a minute. There it goes. It's now it's going to insert. Just give it a second. It's going to then insert where my cursor is in my document. It's going to insert that as an image as well, not just this, the text of the, the equation. So I can actually start to, to uh, collect that information as well into my document. Just give it a minute. It's going to turn up on my screen. And I'll just... Uh, drag the screen across here, back here, so I can see it. And there it is, it's turned up, and I've actually also just embedded that whole document into my, into, that whole screen into my, into my document as well. You know, and things like using, uh, back to using the read and write toolbar, and if you remember that feature with the uh, voice note, I could now attach a voice note to that, um, and uh, explaining more about what I, what, was involved in that diagram, for instance. Uh, and lots of different ways I could use these features in, in combination together. Okay, I'm looking at my screen, it's 1.53. I really need to get a wriggle on here and finish up. And I just want to finish up just by quickly doing one last thing, Darlene, if that's okay. Just one last feature. That's fine. <laughs> we've only, one we've last... only got two quick. I only got two questions, so we're fine. Okay. Just one, one last thing. Um, so that's that's the mobile version is a fantastic um, tool for our students uh, in in um, in lectures, in tutorials, in whatever they're doing, uh, uh, generating their own content, even for um, in, even for teachers and staff themselves to be able to generate uh, content by writing what they need on a piece of paper, and then it will convert that into digital text for them. But the last thing is, I just uh, this thing called uh, we've also now got a thing called Equatio. Whoops, Equatio uh, Screenshot Reader. And this is slide 52. With this, now you have the ability to um, to when you find. Uh, I just lost that. Here we go. Uh, I just need to go to, sorry, I'm just going to go to, uh, just quickly, just give me a second, I had it up on my screen, I just need to find this, I've just got this, um, this document, uh, here, we go. here we go, just um, quickly finding it, screenshot, here it is, okay. 
So here, here, here is uh, a document really quickly. Uh, I've got a picture of this of a T-shirt. The T-shirt has, has an equation on it. It says, what's your definition of beauty? I don't know what that is. I can call up Equatio. So my toolbar comes up. I've taken a picture of this, of this person's T-shirt with this formula, which I don't really know what it is, and it's saying underneath the, the formula, what's your definition of beauty? We now have a thing called e uh, Equatio Screenshot Reader. It's on my toolbar. When I choose that, it turns my cursor into a crosshairs. I can now draw a box around that equation that's in that in that photo. Screenshot Reader will now analyze that and convert that into an equation. It will read Erase it back to me. Erase the I pi power plus one equals zero. It's read that back to me, but more importantly, what I can do is I can now copy that that equation. I want to find out what, what, what that is because it, the, the, it was saying that it was the definition of beauty. I copy that equation. I'm going to a new tab. I'm pasting in what I copied, doing a quick search, and it's actually, it's actually come up. The search has come up. That equation is, in fact, Euler's identity, which is, if, if you're a mathematics person, apparently is the most beautiful equation ever. And so now I've quickly been able to find that what that is. And I've even been able to do things like it's taking me to a Wikipedia website. There's a whole bunch of equations there. And I remember one of these equations I thought was something to do with the circle. So I can, is that one, it's this one here that I'm moving my cursor around. Well, look, I've got equation, equation on my toolbar up here. I click on it. On any website, I have access to the screenshot reader. I click on the screenshot reader now. I go back over here, I want to grab that equation off the website. It's now going to grab that equation for me. It will read it back to me. I don't want it back, read back to me, but I'm going to copy that. Go back to my document here. Put my cursor there. Now, because I've got equation open, I'm going to paste in what I just copied from that website. Now, I'm pretty sure that equation is something to do with the circle. I'm going to choose the graph editor and I can see automatically by choosing the graph editor that yes, in fact, it is, I've graphed it as a circle. So using the screenshot reader, I'm able to quickly go in and not only grab stuff that I haven't been accessible for me, but also use that in a whole bunch of innovative ways. Okay, that was my last little bit there that I just wanted to show you around equation editor. Uh, sorry, uh, equa Equatio Screenshot Reader that lets you the ability to screenshot math anywhere you are. So just to finish, I need to finish, just to finish to say that read and write and Equatio, more importantly, the, at essence what we're talking about is giving our students access and use the ability to use the information they need in ways that are meaningful for them. So we, we've actually, we need to remove those barriers around literacy and not being able to make maths digital by actually making our, our learners engaged and empowered to do that. And again, back to that issue I mentioned at the beginning about giving them learner agency. If you want to know more about either of those tools, Read and Write or Equatio, you can go to our YouTube channel uh, for text help at youtube.com forward slash text help. Uh, or uh, just to finish up, if you need any support around any of these uh, what I've come to demonstrate today in this in this uh, in this webinar, if you download either Read and Write or Equatio, and you're having any problems, you can contact our technical support team here on the Asia, in the Asia Pack team via support at techtop.com. Or if you just want to know more, uh, contact myself or anybody else on the Asia Pacific team. You can contact us via Asia Pack at techtop.com. And I think that's it, Darlene. Brilliant. Thank you, Greg. That was very informative and 
taken lots of notes, so hopefully I'll be able to pass on that wealth of information to others um, and we'll be able to share the webinar. We received a couple of, oh, probably three questions that need answering, but because we've hit the, the two o'clock mark, um, what we might do is we will have those, Greg's happy to answer those questions, but we'll put them on the website under the um, under the video so people can get back to work at two o'clock. Um, so, and if you have any other questions, please um, yeah, put them in the podcast, um, in the question um, bit now or email us um, in the next five minutes and um, and Greg will spend some time answering those. So thank you very much. It was um, yeah, a fantastic presentation. I really, um, yeah, I'm really excited about learning this. Um, next, I think I still haven't quite mastered text help, but um, read and write goal, but hopefully the next, I like learning new things and pr um, pushing my brain to new boundaries. Um, That's so good. Thank you. That's all right. Can I just jump in and say that I'm happy to provide these slides for anybody. So I'm happy to provide the, the slide deck to anybody either as a, whatever format they need. So um, that can be great as well. Excellent. And they'll also be up on the website. So great. thank you everybody for attending today. Thank you heaps, Greg, for um, joining us. We haven't got an, another webs, um, webinar booked in as yet, but hopefully we will have soon. So in finishing, I just want to recognise Mel, the captioner, for her great work today. And um, yeah, thank you very much, Greg, and hopefully we'll um, yeah see you at a conference or at a presentation soon. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.